something new is rapidly gaining a foothold in the world of electric light bulbs. First we had filament based incandescent bulbs. Then compact fluorescent lights, CFLs, came along, offering the same light output and longer lifespan, whilst drawing around a fifth of the power. Now we're seeing lamps using light emitting diodes, LEDs, in all manner of shapes and sizes, offering even better efficiency and even longer life. But some manufacturers are flooding the market with LED lamps that are inexpensive, bright, but potentially lethal. This Philips lamp is an example of one of the safe LED designs you can pick up in the supermarket. The only exposed metal on this lamp, apart from the main cap end connections themselves, is the end cap and that's insulated from the mains otherwise it would have tripped out the supply when I put it into that earthed brass lamp holder just now. Completely safe to handle even when it's switched on which is pretty important if you're going to get your item to qualify for a CE mark on the side. This however is a different matter. This is what's often referred to as a corn lamp or a corn cob lamp with LEDs arranged in strips along the sides plus a cluster on the top. This one was purchased on eBay from a UK based company called Eco Energy Reduction Solutions or Eco Earth and as you can see it's got the CE mark which means all these exposed solder connections on the LEDs should be safe to touch. Really? Well let's find out. Here we have what at first looks like quite a complicated test setup, but in fact it's quite simple. This allows me to adjust the mains voltage for testing, which in the UK tends to be between 230 and 240 volts. This shows the input main supply and the output test voltage. This is an RCD protected socket. Now normally all of the current flowing in through the live wire flows back out through the neutral. If you touch something live, such as a cut lawnmower cable or a faulty appliance, some of the current will flow through you instead. Any more than a couple of milliamps, and the RCD trips. This, which is connected to this box here, monitors the power drawn by the lamp. Now, normally it measures power in the neutral wire, and normally that doesn't matter. But we need to measure power in the live wire here, so these sockets here just swap the live and neutral over through the meter, and then swap them back again afterwards. As you can see, Three green lights means everything's wired properly. This is a 240 volt 25 watt pygmy bulb, similar to the bulb you find in a microwave oven or a fridge, and which just happens to have about the same electrical resistance as the average human body does from one hand to the other at 240 volts. Here it's connected to this probe lead and shows if something is live. The higher the voltage, the brighter the bulb. These meters show the voltage across the bulb and the current flowing through the bulb. And the other end of the pygmy bulb can be connected either to neutral or to earth right here. Here's the lamp drawing 7.4 watts, which is about right because it's marketed as a 7 watt lamp. Now, if these LED connections are safe to touch, when I touch them with this red test lead, nothing will happen. Exactly the same as if I touch the end connector on this small power supply. Let's see. There you go. Enough power th flowed through the bulb to make the RCD trip. The bare LED contacts on this bulb are, in fact, live. So, touching one of these lamps while switched on will trigger the RCD and cut the power to limit the severity of an electric shock. But what if there isn't an RCD? Many homes have no RCD protection on the lighting circuit so that a faulty appliance that trips the RCD doesn't plunge the whole place into darkness. Let's perform the test again, this time without any RCD protection. Remember, the brighter that pygmy bulb, the higher the voltage and the higher the current availability. At 240 volts, it'll draw around 105-106 milliamps. Let's see what happens when it contacts the LEDs again. Right, the bulbs lit quite brightly and the meters are showing 
150 volts at 82 milliamps. That'll give you a nasty shock, especially if you're holding the bulb in one hand and a metal life fitting in the other. Now for those who think these meters may be showing slightly odd readings because of the way this draws power, this oscilloscope is showing the incoming main supply, which although it is 240 volts, that's the mean voltage, the peak is actually closer to 340 volts. The pygmy bulb is drawing 25.4 watts, so it's pretty much what you'd expect for a 25 watt pygmy bulb. 106 milliamps, that's on the raw mains. On the lamp, we've still got around 250 volts peak available and the power consumption has gone up from 7.2 watts to 26.1. Unfortunately, this shock risk is also present on similar lamps from other suppliers. This lamp was purchased through Amazon UK from Tech Leader, one of their marketplace sellers who ships from the Netherlands. The bulb came in a box branded eachbuyer.com. It's marketed as a 6 watt bulb, which is a bit misleading because it's only drawing 4.1 watts. No CE mark this time, but once again, there is high voltage and high current available from these LEDs. Once again, the pygmy bulb is glowing brightly, and we've got 186 volts at 92 milliamps. So once again, a very nasty electric shock risk. Also, it's quite easy to pop this cap off, exposing all the circuitry inside and more bare wires. Another two, again from TechLeader and EachBuyer.com through the Amazon store. The one on the left is supposed to be 9 watts, but as you can see, it's actually a 6 watt lamp. The one on the right is supposed to be 12 watts, and for a change, actually is a 12 watt lamp. Both, however, have the same exposed connections as seen on the earlier one. And once again, we've got much the same. It's 174 volts, 88 milliamps there. And 141 volts at 79 milliamps there. And they're also quite easy to flip the tops off exposing the driver circuit and more live connections inside. Now, not all of these corn cob lamps are quite as dangerous as those ones. This lamp, again on Amazon UK but sold by Hawks Tech, uses chip on board or cob LEDs underneath a layer of phosphor gel. There are no exposed connections on there and as long as the gel can withstand mains voltage, it should be safe to touch. And in fact, I have handled this one bare hands whilst it was powered up and not even had a tingle. However, as you can see, I've already blown the lamp whilst testing it. Because if the gel is pierced, once again, there is significant current available. We're getting 64 milliamps there at 122 volts. Still not as bad as the rest, but still a very nasty shock. This lamp is made by Horshang and sold on Amazon UK by First Seller Technology and shipped from Belgium. This lamp has a clear plastic cap covering the whole LED assembly, so there's no exposed connections and, as you can see, the lamp is safe to touch. It is possible to pop the cap off, revealing once again a similar driver circuit to the other ones but it is quite it does take a bit of force to do that it's not going to accidentally fall off I don't think it does it does take a bit of effort if it's fixed on properly to actually pop it off again so as you can see there are some safer options out there but the ones with the exposed connections should only be used in enclosed fittings really where there's no risk of them being touched and even then, they should only be installed with the supply switched off. Thanks for watching.